In this video, we're going to look at using Graphs and Plus DSP combined with the Monitor Controller to set up dedicated monitoring buses for base management and room correction. This is a little bit of an advanced topic, so if you're not familiar with using the Monitor Controller or configuring the mixer, you may want to check out those tutorial videos before you watch this one. There are a couple of reasons why you would want to use a dedicated monitor bus. First, we want to make sure that whatever processing we do to correct the speakers is separate from whatever EQing that you want to do to your mix. You don't want to record your speaker processing into the mix if you're bouncing through the Mio mixer back into your DAW. The other reason is that by using a separate monitoring bus, we can mix and monitor in different channel counts. And I'm going to show you how you can use that to your advantage by mixing in stereo and sending out three channels for left, right, and subwoofer, or four channels, or even five if you'd like. To begin, I'm going to go into the mixer configuration. You can see that I already have a mix bus, which is stereo, and I'm going to create a monitor bus. And for right now, let's just stay in stereo. So now I have my monitor bus here. What I'm going to do is go to the mix bus and use a send. Don't forget to bring the fader up. So now I have my mix, I have a monitor, and I'm going to send the monitor bus to the monitor controller. Now you may wonder why I still have the mix in there. If we're going to use the monitor bus, why don't we just get rid of the mix? Here's why. If you were to just go in and insert a 12-band EQ, let's say you wanted to use this to do some EQ to correct your monitors in the room, and you have a wacky curve. While that curve may sound okay through your monitors, if you listen via the headphones, you're not going to want to hear the EQ coming through this monitor bus. You would want to listen to the raw mix. So by keeping the mix there, we can actually switch back and forth between the raw mix going to the headphones, or we can change to the monitor bus going to the stereo output. But what we're going to do, rather than even just inserting an EQ here, is we're going to use graph. The main reason why is that a lot of times when you are doing room correction, you need a different EQ curve on one channel versus the other. If we were to insert the stereo EQ into the bus itself, we would be EQing both sides equally. By using a graph, I can insert two mono EQs so that I can EQ the left and right channels separately. So now I have a very simple stereo monitor bus with a graph so that I can insert two mono EQs and I'm ready to mix just by switching my source over to the monitor and my destination to stereo. Working in stereo is pretty easy, but what if you want to use a subwoofer? Before I show you how to do that, Let's take a look at what happens when you have mismatched numbers of source and destination channels. Here you can see a list of sources from mono to 7.1 and destinations from mono to 7.1 and the channels that they contain. Now even though we normally refer to these as stereo and LCR and quad, really what we're dealing with is mono is a one channel bus two channels for stereo, three for LCR, four for quad, etc. If you think of the destinations purely as the number of channels that they contain rather than the normal LCR or quad or nomenclature that we normally use, you'll see how you can start to do some very interesting things if you mix and match your source and destination counts. For example, if you take a stereo source, which has two channels, left and right, and send that to a three-channel destination, the left and right channel will be passed through and there's no information on the third channel. That's where we're going to put our sub. 
The opposite is true if you send a source to a destination that has less channels. For example, if I was to take an LCR source that has three channels and send that to a stereo destination that has two channels, the left and right, or channels one and two, would pass through to my stereo destination. The third channel would be lost. This is something to keep in mind, especially if you're working with a mono bus. As you can see, if you take anything from 7.1 to a stereo source and send it to a mono bus, only the first channel is going to be passed through. Any other information is just going to be lost. If you have, let's say, a stereo signal that you want to send to a mono bus, let's say DAW 1 and 2, if you send DAW 1 and 2 as a stereo source to this mono destination, the right channel is going to be lost. The way to work around this is to have two mono sources, DAW 1 and DAW 2, assign both of them to a mono bus, and then they will be summed together to mono. But if you send a stereo signal to a mono bus, the right channel, the second channel, will be lost. So let's take a look at how we can create a left, right, and subwoofer monitoring system. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this graph on my monitor bus and reopen the mixer configuration. And here for my monitor bus, I'm going to change that from stereo to LCR. You can see when I hit configure, I still have signal being passed, but here I have my channels one and two, the left and right are coming through, and there's nothing on channel three. So let me insert a graph. And as usual, all three inputs are straight wired to all three outputs. So what we need to do is actually combine or sum channels one and two to go to channel three. First thing I'm going to do is insert a volume control. And the reason why we do this is because when you sum two signals together, you turn them down by 6 dB so that when they are recombined, they'll combine at unity. Next, I'm going to insert the actual channel summer. Now all I have to do is put inputs 1 and 2 into the volume control, come out of the volume control into the summer, and then the summer goes to output 3. Now you'll notice that you're still not seeing any signal here on the third meter and that's because the metering on an output bus is actually picked up before the inserts. So we're not going to see that here, but we will see it on the front panel of the interface or in the console window that I have behind the mixer. But before we're going to see any signal, I have to create a 2.1 output path. So let's go to the monitor controller and I'll create 2.1. And again, because we're dealing with three signals, that needs to be LCR. And what I'm going to do is I'll assign left to output one, right to output two. Now you may think that I would put center to output three. Actually going to put that to output six. And let me show you why. Sometimes I work in 5.1. Now when we look at 5.1, that has six channels in the destination. And that last channel is LFE, or the subwoofer channel. So what I'm doing is setting up my monitor controller. Even if I'm only working in three channels, I can send this last channel to whatever analog output that I want. So left will always be analog one, right will always be analog two, and my sub will come out of analog six. So down the road, if I want to create monitor paths to work in 5.1, the subwoofer will be assigned to the right analog out. So now that I have analog 1, 2, and 6 assigned, hit OK there, and now when I set the output path to be 2.1, now that I've switched my monitor source to be the monitor bus, 
you can see I have output on 1, 2, and 6, and they're all at about the same level. This would work if you were using a subwoofer that had a built-in crossover, but let's say that your subwoofer doesn't have a built-in crossover, or that you want to high-pass your left and right at the same frequency that the subwoofer kicks in. Let's reopen this graph, and we're going to go to the math category and add in a band split. The band split is crossover. So I'll take input 1 to left, input 2 to the right, and now you can see I have low and high outputs. First, I'm going to set this crossover frequency. For right now, let's set it to 80 hertz. So I'm going to take my low outputs into that volume control so that anything below 80 hertz is going to go through the volume control to be turned down a bit, then summed and sent out of output 3. And I will take the high outputs and send them to outputs 1 and 2. Now you can see that the output on analog 1 and 2 is much higher than the output on analog 6. That's because there isn't a lot of information in my voice below 80 cycles, which is where we set the crossover point. If I play some music, you'll be able to see the subwoofer level get much higher. So now we have a working crossover. The next thing that we want to do is actually be able to put EQ into the graph so that we can do some room correction. So I'll get a couple of six band EQs. Hopefully we don't need more than six bands to make the room sound good. I mean, you have the ability to put more in, but if you have to do that much EQing, then you probably should be looking at other solutions. And we'll take the high outputs. They'll go through these EQs. And now we have a crossover with EQ for room correction. The last thing that you may need to do is depending on how in-depth you want to get in tuning your system, you may need to put some delay in to time align your left rights and your sub. Where you put the delay depends on where the speakers are placed. So let's say that your subwoofer is a couple of feet behind your left right speakers. If that was the case, you would need to delay your left rights to match your subwoofer. So you would go and get a delay. Uh, let's grab a 1K stereo and insert that here. And now we have a complete speaker alignment where we have a crossover so that we can set where the main monitors end and the subwoofer begins. The low output of that crossover is being summed together. That has an EQ. The high end or the full range system is going through a delay for time alignment. And we have two bands of EQ. And you can see all of that happening here on my analog outputs. And again, if you wanted to AB between the system with the subwoofer, without the subwoofer, you can just toggle between the 2.1 and the stereo outputs. As you can see, when I switch to stereo, I have no signal on analog 6. When I go back to 2.1, I have my subwoofer. If I want to listen on headphones, I would just switch over to my raw mix, which doesn't have the processing graph, and change to my CANS output. Another thing that you could do is, let's say, you don't want to have to switch back and forth between the mix and monitor buses. What you can do is go back to 
monitor as a source. I'm going to go into the configuration and remove the CANS output. Now what I'm going to do is go to the direct out of my mix and send that to CANS left right. And then by doing that, I can use the CANS control here and that will change my CANS level. Let's say that rather than having one subwoofer, you work with two subwoofers. You want to use stereo subs. We can do that as well. So I'm going to remove this graph. Again, go back to the mixer configuration, turn my monitor bus from a 3 to a 4 channel. And we can see that we have 4 channels there. Insert graph. I'll get my band split. Left and right input. Grab my EQs, so I want a total of four channels of EQ. I'll also want that delay. And now I can wire everything together. So I'm going to take my lows, I'll put them here. Now we don't have to do any summing because I'm sending those in stereo. Take the highs, actually I'll move my delay up there. Highs will go here. Output to my EQ. So now I have my band split that again, I'll set it 80. So anything below 80 Hertz will come out of the low left and right, go through these EQs and out to outputs three and four. Anything above 80 Hertz will come out of the high left and right, have those through a delay. That's assuming that the mains are forward relative to the subwoofer. Those go through EQs and those signals will go out on output 1 and 2. And the last step is to create an output path. So let's call this 2.2 and we need that to be an LCRS a quad or four channel bus. They're all the same thing. And I'll set analog one and two for the left and right and I'll send my subs out on five and six. Now that I've done that when I select the 2.2 output I have my high pass audio coming out one and two and I have my low pass audio coming from five and six. So by working with the graph inserted into a dedicated monitor bus, we can set up crossovers and room EQ to correct our listening space in a manner that doesn't affect our mix audio. Now that we have this dedicated monitor bus with our crossover and EQ time alignment delay installed, we can actually start correcting the room without affecting our mix environment.